How's it going, bros? My name is Pa. How many people do you think have stolen his intro? I'm curious. Like, leave leave comments. It's like a, a jelly bean jar. Like, how many how many people do you think have done PewDiePie's intro on one of their videos? <laughs> I'm really curious. Anyway, uh, we are here for week four of the GPC, guys. We are back after our break week. Uh, if you guys missed our transactions, just to go over really quickly, we dropped Empoleon, Masquerine, and Flareon, and in return, we picked up Aerodactyl, Kabutops, and Ditto. That's going to come into play this week, as you will see because um, we did use at least one of the mons that we picked up. But uh, this week, we are taking on the Phoenix Midnight, coached by Lewis or Turbo Blaze IV. And uh, Turbo is a very good player. Yeah, he's actually been uh, power ranking me in the NPL minors, and he's been doing a very good job of it. Uh, I think he had me at fourth uh, on his latest power rankings for week two, so uh, thank you very much, Turbo. But uh, he's got a, a pretty cool team. Uh, I must say, I was uh, kind of intimidated of it at first. Let's go over his members. He has uh, Zerkatry, Mew, Kieran Black, Crocodile, Delmize, Mega Houndoom, Lucario, Gorbis, Coughing and Floet. Now, obviously, Coughing and Floet don't look too threatening, but actually, realistically, uh, both of those do a pretty good job at walling some of my mons. Uh, like, Floet can take on Zygarde pretty well, and Coughing can take on Megalopony, which is really interesting, but I didn't expect them to come, so. I was kind of on the fence. I, I prepped more for his first seven mons than anything else. Not so much for Gorbis, and you guys will see why. But uh, yeah, some things to note. Uh, Mew is probably going to come max defense to wall my Megalopony. That's more than likely. Uh, I could see Delmize coming for sure. Uh, Delmize was like top. Mew and Delmize and I think Lucario were at the top of my, uh, my list of mons that were definitely coming. Kieran Black was next. Kind of on the fence about it. Uh, Zerkatry wasn't really up there, I would say. Crook uh, had a pretty good matchup against me, and definitely Mega Houndoom. Mega Houndoom had to come. Uh, that was, like, number three or number four on my list. But, uh, yeah, so, as you can see, the first mon that we're bringing here is Luna, the Megalopony. Uh, Lopanite, 252 attack, Adamant, uh, 144 HP, 4 defense, and uh, 108 speed. So, Mega Evolved this speed, and I'll show you guys. I'm actually going to change it up real quick right here. Mega Evolved. Uh, this gives it just enough speed to outspeed his Houndoom speed creeping my Thunderous. So if his Houndoom goes to uh, 332, which is one speed point faster than my Thunderous Therian, then uh, my Leg Megalopony outspeeds it. Now the point of this set is so that if Mew is at 80%, or like, actually I think about 85, switches out and rocks are up, the next time it tries to come in to wall my Megalopony, I get off a power-up punch, and I kill it with the Last Resort that follows up. So, that is the idea. Uh, last Resort does a ton of damage. Uh, as well, as you can see, other than Mew, he does not have a good switch into this. Uh, Zerkatree takes a ton, uh, and I outspeed. Kieran Black, same principle, takes a ton, and I outspeed. Uh, Crocodile doesn't want to take a fighting move. Delmize gets hit because of Scrappy. Mega Houndoom is also weak to fighting. Lucario is weak to fighting. He's got so many fighting weaknesses on his team uh, that are really, really exploitable. Uh, like Kieran Black, Crocodile, Houndoom, and Lucario, uh, that Megalopony absolutely has to come this game. Uh, but I'm not bringing your standard set. I had a mock against Jose, and he actually brought Protect on Mega Kieran for me, which was really, 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 really smart uh, for Megalopony. Uh, really cool set that he brought there, but uh, Luna definitely looking to put in work, some work with this. Uh, definitely at least to eliminate the Mew, because that's going to open up a lot of doors to the rest of our team. So the next Mon that we're bringing is going to be Lucky and Bad, the Jirachi. This is the first time I'm bringing a Choice Scarf Jirachi, uh, but it does very well this game, as you can see. Uh, other than Mew, nothing really wants to take hits from this. Uh, Delmize gets flinched down uh, by Iron Head. Uh, Kieran Black, I outspeed Scarf Kieran Black, that's the speed on this, this 216 Jolly Nature. I put the rest into uh, HP so that I could take a potential Earth Power on the switch, uh, or even maybe a Pursuit from Crocodile if I'm switching out. Um, Delmize sort of walls me a little bit, uh, but I can flinch it down like I said before. Mega Houndoom and Lucario both take Drain Punch and get destroyed uh, by Drain Punch, they're both two hit KO'd. Uh, Mew is the only real thing stopping me, I did say that. Uh, but again, that's another thing that I can uh, Iron Head flinch down. I have Stealth Rocks on this set because I can see this forcing a lot of switches. Uh, and if I get up Rocks, his form of hazard removal is either Mew with Defog or uh, Delmize with Rapid Spin. So uh, on both fronts, I can kind of cover them. Um, if he is forced to Defog with his Mew, he's going to lose a lot of momentum and give me, give me a chance to 2-hit KO him with some of my Mons. Uh, and, uh, and I even have a Mon that can set up uh, later on down the line as you guys will see 
Um, but yeah, so this is uh, this is the idea behind this is that Jirachi for forces a lot of switches. Get up rocks. You turn for momentum, of course, because I don't want to get trapped by things like Crocodile, uh, per perhaps a Scarf Crook, but that wouldn't be faster than me anyway. Uh, I don't want to be uh, pursued trapped by Mega Houndoom either or Sucker Punched uh, as I'm Iron Heading because it can run Sucker Punch. Uh, Lucario gets to set up on me, so U turn uh, does a lot for me this game, so that's why I'm bringing it. Next up, the most offensive Zygarde set that I've brought to date. Choice Banded, max speed. This speed, uh, of course, it's not just mindless uh, EVing. I am speed tying with his uh, with his Kirin Black at, uh, at max speed. So that's the idea. I'm faster than Zerkatry. I'm faster than Defensive Mew. I'm faster than Delmize. As you can see, we're packing on Crunch specifically for Mew and Delmize so that we can hit them super effectively. Uh, Thousand Arrows is just in case he brings Coughing because I have no other moves uh, that I really want to bring on this. Uh, but Earthquake is going to be the move I'm, I spam the most, especially if coughing doesn't come, because the rest of his team is all grounded. So, that's the idea. E-speed for a potential late-game sweep. Uh, if Zerkatree gets out of control and I get it low, I can just E-speed it, knock it out. Uh, this is probably the best uh, Choice Banded Zygarde set that I could bring. Um, as Choice Banded goes, um, Zygarde 10% is probably a little bit better. But uh, looking for Drizzy to do some work this game. Hopefully pick up 1-2 to two kills, we'll see. Next up, we have Raigeki, the Thunderous Therian. Uh, Fight EMZ, so this is the second time that I'm bringing a Z-Crystal. I think this might also be the second or third time I'm bringing uh, Thunderous Theory in. One, one of the two, I can't remember. I'd have to check the sheet, which I have open right now, so I can tell you guys. Uh, Zygarde has come to... Uh, this is its third game. So, uh, no, hold on. Um, Thunderous, Thunderous... No, sorry, it's its second game. So it's only come to two games, and I brought a Z-Crystal on it both times. So, we're already halfway through. This is good. Uh, Fight EMZ is to be able to catch the switch into Crocodile and knock it out because Focus Blast might have a chance not to, especially if he's uh, AV for some reason. Um, Dark Pulse, uh, of course, as you can see for the Mew, for the Delmize, uh, it hits uh, the majority of his team for good damage. And uh, I can always catch the, uh, the Lucario if it wants to come in with a Focus Blast, so it doesn't necessarily want to switch in on me. Uh, Thunderbolt is nice just for the Gorbis, so I can hit it for super effective, uh, as well if I don't want to risk a miss with Focus Blast. It's my main stab. U-turn uh, is to gain momentum. I decided to bring U-turn over Volt Switch specifically because of the Crocodile. I want to be able to hit it for super effective as I gain momentum, so that's always nice. We have 252 Special Attack. I decided to go negative attack nature just so that I could live certain hits. Uh, for example, a boosted uh, plus one Crocodile. Crocodile's knockoff. Uh, if it's Choice Scarf, I live. So there's that. Uh, because I am fighting MZ and he can't knock off my item. And uh, the 208 speed, this 319 is once again faster than his Kieran Black. I have no reason to go any faster than that. I could outspeed a max speed Mew, but he's not going to bring a max speed Mew. I know that. I outspeed Lucario. His team is relatively slow outside of Houndoom. So uh, I'm taking advantage of that by uh, trying to outspeed. My, my team by far outspeeds his. So that's a, that's a big disadvantage to uh, Turbo's team this week is that he does uh, he does lack a little bit of speed against me. So trying to take advantage. And uh, next up on the roster we have Sage, and this is the first time I'm bringing Calm Mind Florges, uh to the uh, to this season of the GPC. I decided to run 20 speed just in case he wants to speed creep me with anything. There's not much that can speed creep me, but uh, you never know. Uh, so I decided to put a little bit into speed. 240 special attack uh, with a, uh, sorry, 240 defense with a bold nature. I was initially going to make Floor just specially defensive, uh, but I wanted it to be able to take an Iron Head from Kieran Black because I knew that he would bring Iron Head, so uh, there was that. Uh, so that, that's, that's why I put it in there. Ultimately, probably not a good move. Uh, I see the Mega Houndoom, that's why I wanted to put this thing specially defensive so that I could switch into his Mega Houndoom. One of his stabs uh, is resisted and the other stab doesn't do that much to me. He can run Sludge Bomb, but he's giving me a chance to Wish Protect and Calm Mind up. He can run Nasty Plot, but I'll beat him first. So, um, ultimately I should have probably put a little bit more into special defense and uh, just given myself enough to live maybe uh, Earthquake from a Banded Crocodile after Rocks, for example. That would have probably been the right defense to run. But I went with this uh, for the game, so uh, this is going to be our set. Uh, obviously, if I get up a couple of Calm Minds, if his Delmize is weakened, uh, I can sweep with this very easily. His Zerkatry does like 15 to, to 18 to me I'm, if I'm at plus 2, uh, and nothing else beats me. Like, Coughing can do some damage to me, but ultimately it won't beat me. Uh, Lucario, if it has Iron Tail, which I don't expect it to this game, uh, can knock me out, but other than that, it can't hit me super hard. Uh, so I can definitely sweep with this Florgis. This is going to be my setup sweeper this game, so... And finally, the new mon to the team that we are bringing, that I decided to nickname right before the match, uh, DJ Khaled, the, uh, the ditto. 
choice scarf uh, with the, the, it's just its choice scarf, um, its standard choice scarf set. As you can see, Turbo's team has an, a ridiculous amount of setup. Uh, Zerkatry, Mew can set up. Uh, Kieran Black can run Home Claws. Crocodile can run Bulk Up. Halnoom can run na Nasty Plot. Lucario gets every form of setup imaginable. And Gorbis specifically gets Shell Smash. I don't want to lose this uh, uh, Smash Pass, but the good thing about his team is that when I come in, even on a Mon that's not set up, he has a hard time switching into his own team. Like, if he had a matchup against himself, it would be really, really uh, prediction heavy and uh, very hard to play. So, I decided to bring Ditto because if you, if you, again, like, let's just take a look at his team really quickly. He brings Crook, right? It's Bandit. I bring in Ditto. His Crook is weakened. I can start Earthquaking him. And if he wants to switch in Mew on a predicted Earthquake, I could knock off as a prediction. If his Zerkatry starts uh, sweeping with me with a Tail Glow set, I can come in on it, knock it out. Uh, if his Kiram goes for Home Claws, it's dead to its own attack. Uh, if his Houndoom goes for a Nasty Plot, if I weaken it, it dies to a plus two flamethrower or a fire blast. His Lucario, if he sets up with that, Swords Dance, I can knock it out with a close combat. It has to bring at least some fighting move. He can run special with Vacuum Wave, but that does even more damage to his team. So, Ditto is very, very good this game, and Lewis doesn't have a lot for it, so I'm going to try to uh, capitalize on that and make Ditto... Uh Make Ditto shine this game, see what we can do with it. This is my first time using Ditto in League format, so uh, let's see how the game goes. We're about to jump into it. Um, I forgot to say that I would leave a timestamp. Oh well, you guys are here now, so uh, yeah, let's jump right into the game. All right, guys, here we are, and you can see team matchup. He brought the Kirin Black, the Mew, the Lucario, the Gorbis, the Delmise, and the Houndoom, so the big uh, three that I expected being the Delmise, the Mew, and the uh, Mega Houndoom did come. Uh, very good checks to my team. I do not have good switch-ins to Delmize's attacks, uh, being his Steel-type stab because of uh, Steel Worker and Ghost-type. Uh, really difficult for me to deal with. Mega Houndoom, uh, looking like a little bit of a threat, not gonna lie. Don't have a lot for it. I do have Jirachi's Drain Punch and uh, Mega Lopunny's uh, Power Up Punch. Hopefully, I am faster than him and he didn't r run a ridiculous amount of speed for no reason. Uh, Mew looking like it can wall my Lopunny for the most part unless I am able to get that setup I talked about in the team builder. But uh, let's hop on into the game. Uh, this is actually my first time re-watching it, I believe. Uh, so I might be a little bit off on some of the plays, but let's see how it goes. We are normal. I'm going to lead off with Thunderous. It has a pretty good matchup. He leads out with his Houndoom. I don't want to take a, a hit for no reason. I'm going to switch out into Florges. He does Mega Evolve and goes straight for the Fire Blast. As you can see, if I was specially defensive, I would have been able to take that a lot better, but I take 41%. Now what I'm going to do is fire off a Moon Blast because I know his Delmize is coming in, and I just want damage off on it so that I can kill it later in the game. I'm going to get off some solid damage right there, and I know he's probably going to go for Anchor Shot right here, so I'm going to go for Protect. I also calc that damage. I found I found out he was uh, Assault Vest, so there was no risk of me going for Protect right here. He couldn't set up a Swords Dance, nothing like that. So I am just going to switch out here into my Thunderous. Uh, he's just going to go for another Anchor Shot. I cannot switch out right now. I could have gone for U-Turn right here, but I felt like Dark Pulsing and getting off some damage was a better play. He's going to bring back in his Houndoom. I'm not going to get a lot of damage off on that. Nice prediction on his part to predict the Dark Pulse. I'm now going to switch out into my floor just because I can take two fire blasts, right? Wrong. <laughs> he burdens me. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to take the next one as well. I can't really set up a wish or anything like that, and I don't want his Delmise coming in for free. He does apologize for that. I I mean, it's it happens. It's Pokemon. Nothing we can really do about it. But, uh... Yeah, I'm going to get off some crucial damage on this Houndoom, as you guys are going to see a little bit later. Uh, it's going to put it in range of something. Actually, it was in range from when it was at full. But I'm going to go into uh, Megalopony, and I'm going to go for a power-up punch here. And he brings in his Mew, and I'm going to pause it real quick. Now, obviously, on this turn, I can go for a last resort. But looking at his team, I really feel like getting rocks up is going to be essential. Because if he has a Sash on his Gorbis, or uh, if he... Uh, brings back in his Mega Houndoom or his Kiram. I want them taking damage. So I'm going to switch out here. Instead of going uh, for the last resort and revealing my set way too early, I'm going to go into Jirachi. I know he's not going to click anything but Psychic or Will-O-Wisp. Either one would be fine. Uh, I don't mind Jirachi getting burned too much. And I'm going to go for Stealth Rocks right here as he reveals the Shadow Ball. Nice bring on his part. Uh, I guess his last move might have been Ice Beam. I didn't really ask him uh, and he didn't reveal it. So I'm going to go into Thunderous here as he's going to go for another Shadow Ball. I can take that pretty easily. And now I'm pretty convinced that he's going to go into Lucario. So I'm going to predict that and I'm going to go for a U-Turn. Uh, because I don't want this thing getting a justified boost. So, 
there goes the U-turn, and now I'm going to go into my Zygarde. Now, this is a little bit of a risky play because he could easily be Choice Scarfed but, and have Ice Punch. But uh, for some reason, I'm looking at his team and I'm like, this this can't be Choice Scarfed. I don't believe that it's Choice Scarf for even a second. He wouldn't bring a Choice Scarf Lucario against a team with Florges. Uh, it's just a little bit too risky. I also have Thunderous, so that can take a close combat from uh, about 60 easily. Uh, and so I'm just going to bring in my Zygarde. I'm going to go for an Earthquake. I'm going to get off a lot of damage on the incoming Delmice. Now, <laughs> this is a funny play that happened uh, in my mock battle with Jose. There's a really cool thing about Delmize is that it's a spinner, but it's also a spin blocker. <laughs> so I'm going to bring in my Ditto to block his spin, knowing that he would not he would probably not go for a, um, a Shadow Claw on that turn. And I'm going to go for a Shadow Claw on my own and knock out his Delmize. Now, he's going to bring in Nicki Minaj, the uh, Gorbis, and he's going to go for a Shell Smash. And I didn't care at this point. I was like, okay, I can just go for a Shadow Claw, weaken this after his Shell Smash, and now I can just switch out into my thunderous sack it off it's not doing anything else this game it's uh, it's potentially outspeeding the kirim i don't know yet because i don't know if it's ha if it has a choice scarf um mew can sort of take my hits probably knock me out from a with a psychic from the range it's at and uh, lucario can e-speed me and his houndoom outspeeds so there's no reason for me to keep Rageki. unfortunately Rageki not putting in as much work as i would have liked it to it did give me momentum though i uh, did a pretty good job uh, with uh, catching that lucario off guard bringing in my zygarde for the first time in this game but now i'm just gonna go back into ditto and uh, there's nothing you can really switch into here i'm just gonna go for a surf and knock out this gorbis so shell smash immediately stopped uh or shell smash sweep rather so ditto up to two kills already so this is really looking pretty good now he's gonna bring in his lucario uh, I'm not too content about this, but I am going to switch out because I know that he's probably not going to go for anything but an E-Speed, uh, trying to knock me out because I do have the HP stat of a Ditto, uh, and also I'm at minus one defense because of the, uh, the Shell Smash copy. So, I'm going to get out of here, I'm going to go into to Zygarde. I already know that I've threatened out his Lucario before, so this is a pretty safe play. Now I'm just going to go for another Earthquake. This time he's going to bring in his Mew, knowing that I'm Choice Banded uh, from the damage on Delmize. I don't know if he actually calc it, but this is going to do a tremendous amount. And uh, basically my play here is to just go for another Earthquake, uh, force him to uh, to Roost. If he went for anything but Roost, uh, I would pretty much knock him out on the following turn, so that would be fine. I'm going to go for another Quake here. He's going to Roost again. And knowing that he's going to uh, going for repeated roosts and I've conditioned him into that, I'm going to switch out into my Jirachi at this point. And now I'm going to play off a little bit of luck. Uh, and I'm going to go for... Uh, that's that's why Jirachi's name is Lucky and Bad. I'm going to go for Iron Head Flinches. I do trust my Jirachi. I know it's going to get a few, so uh, let's go for it. Let's try to get some flinches. Flinch this Mew down. So I'm going to get him down to 65 here. He's going to go back up to 71. I believe this is the turn where I get a critical hit on his Mew. And uh, that's going to bring it down to 41%. Uh, I mean, he Shadow Balls me on this turn, so it's fine. Now, he lowers my Spidef. Um, the thing is, he still can't knock me out with a Psychic. To knock me out, he needs to go for a Shadow Ball. I'm going to try to kill this Mew right here with, with Iron Heads. But unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to get a flinch on the following turn. So he's going to be able to Roost up and keep his Mew. This is fine, though, because I didn't want Jirachi in while his Lucario was still around. Because that could easily be Steadfast. Or inner focus and I can't flinch it down so uh, I'm gonna go for another iron head I am NOT gonna get a flinch again and now we repeat the process he's back up to full but here's the thing I'm gonna go for an iron head 22% great flinch cool gonna go for another iron head I need one more flinch guys gonna bring this thing down to 64 it's gonna go back up to 71 the thing is he has no reason to roost right here He's going to try to Shadow Ball because he's still not in range of any one of Lopany's attacks. So I'm going to make the play on this turn out into Mega Lopany on the Shadow Ball and I'm going to catch it correctly. So I'm not going to take any damage from that. And now he's sitting in a range where I can go for Power Up Punch and then on the following turn Last Resort and get off a lot of damage on this thing. Not necessarily knock it out, but I'm EV to live a Psychic easily and I'm going to bring this Mew down so low that it can't switch back in on stealth rocks that's the important thing so i'm going to make sure that Mew can no longer come back in on rocks i'm going to bring in my zygarde and now he has no switch ins i'm going to go for the earthquake i'm going to knock out this Mew. now from the way he brought in his kirim on this turn i was pretty convinced that it was scarfed i could have easily switched out into jirachi on this turn uh and caught the ice beam and started going for drain punches and knocking out his members 
But I know that my Jirachi is faster than even a Scarf Kirim. That's what I EV'd it for. So no matter what he clicks here, if he goes for Ice Beam and he knocks out my, my Zygarde, that's fine. I don't need Zygarde to win. All I need to win is my Jirachi. I start spamming uh, Drain Punch and his, um, his Houndoom is low enough. He would sack it off probably and go out into his Lucario. And E-Speed doesn't kill from the range I'm at. I'm at 21% if you guys remember. I would get back enough health. He would uh, give me uh, enough health. Uh, I would take off enough off of his Lucario to where E-Speed would kill. And uh, then his Kiram has to deal uh, with coming back in on rocks if he were to sack off his Houndoom to my Jirachi's Drain Punch uh, after this turn. But I'm going to stay in with Zygarde because, again, I have no reason not to. Ditto can clean up. Jirachi can do some work. So I'm just going to stay in. And he decides going for Earth Power is his best play. And that is not going to be a 2-hit KO on my Zygarde, whereas I will 2-hit KO his Kirin Black. He can no longer switch out his Kirin Black. I'm going to go for an Earthquake. I love his nicknames, by the way. They're, uh, they're UK references uh, to, to some of the media that I do uh, that I do look at. But anyway, anyway, he's going to bring in his Lucario. He's going to e-speed me. I have no reason to switch out. Sorry, I clipped my mic there. Now I can go into DJ Khaled again. And... Uh, I am a Scarf Lucario against a Houndoom and an opposing Lucario without a choice Scarf because, yeah, uh, he's definitely not Scarfed. Uh, I look at his set and I'm like, yep, this is not choice Scarfed. Uh, he's got uh, he's got some stuff on here. But anyway, uh, he's going to go for E-Speed uh, just to get off some damage. I'm going to go for Close Combat, knock out the Lucario, no reason not to. And unless his Lucario uh, had about like 220 speed or 224 or less, uh, it would always outspeed the uh, the Houndoom, and I think he has to be like no speed investment uh, to be able to be that low at 224. But uh, he's gonna bring in his Houndoom, and uh, now no matter what happens, unless he sucker punch um, and gets an absolute max roll crit on Lucario and uh, catches my Drachi with the sucker punch, I win right here. So. I'm going to go for the close combat, and we do pick up a 2-0 victory over the Phoenix Midnight Turbo Blaze IV. Guys, go check him out in the description down below. Go check out his side of the battle. I'm sure there's things that I haven't talked about in this uh, in this video that you might want to know about this game. Uh, there might have been some fortunate hacks in my favor at some point. I'm not sure. Uh, the play with Zygarde, I guess. He called it a play, and he said that it lost him the game uh, when I stayed in with Zygarde on his Kirim. But realistically, unless he was Scarfed, uh, it was a speed tie at best, uh, and um, yeah, so uh, he if he was not Scarfed, he would probably not outspeed me because I can't see him going max speed on his Kirim, because if anything, I'm bringing a defensive Zygarde, right? Uh, you're, you're not going to EV your Kirim to, to speed tie a max speed Zygarde. That makes no sense. I can set up my speed with Dragon Dance, so... Um, it, it made sense for him to be Scarf by the way he brought it in, and I just kept in my Kirin because, like I said, it didn't matter anymore at that point. I would just be able to go into Jirachi after and start firing off some train punches, so that's going to be the game. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Make sure to check out all the coaches in the description as well. I'll always have a link to uh, to all of their channels so that you can check out their games, know how the GPC is going. Uh, we are now 3-1 and one with a plus 5 differential, so looking pretty good. I'm continuing my trend at the moment of winning two games, losing one. I've done it in the NPL Miners, I've done it in the GPC, uh, I've done it in pretty much almost every league that I play, uh, that I've played in, in Gen 7, and I was doing it all last season in the GPC as well. I was going two wins, one loss, two wins, one loss. So, uh, keeping up the trend, I guess I'm, I'm a 0.67% uh, ratio player, I guess you could say, but uh, yeah, no, it's going pretty well. Uh, we are taking on two pretty big players uh, in the next two weeks. Uh, I believe next week we have Paul, Fallop, and the uh, Dufer Drapions, who we lost to last season, and uh, right after we have our good friend Ethan, who if you remember, uh, the first time we ever faced, and but this was even before we became friends, uh, I crit his, uh, his Terrakion with my Dugtrio's Earthquake and knocked it out, so... Yeah, about that. Um, <laughs> hopefully, uh, I don't want him to get revenge, but if he does, I won't be mad about it, you know? Um, but yeah, if we can win at least against uh, Paul, because I want my revenge for last season, uh, if we can beat him next week, that would be awesome. So make sure to stay tuned for that, guys. Uh, again, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao!